Hi, host Derek here, host of Talking with Famous People. And if you're an ENTP like me, you probably like to argue. In fact, some people probably call you argumentative, difficult, too much of a fighter over things that maybe don't need to be fought about. Or maybe over things that do need to be fought about. Regardless, you likely walk around with a certain amount of swagger knowing that no one's going to best you in some sort of rhetorical contest. That swagger is also very likely misplaced. What I mean by that is, for most ENTPs who have not been formally trained in argumentation, they are flying by the seat of their pants and getting by. But if you come across a real opponent, expert intuition only takes you so far. So I want to give a few pointers in argumentation. I'm going to give it through a couple of different angles. If you want to de-escalate how you approach it, if you want to resolve a problem, how you approach it, or if you want to defeat an opponent, how you approach it, okay? So three different frameworks. That's lesson number one. Understand why you're engaging in the argumentation in the first place. What is your goal? If it is to de-escalate, you need to do it in a very different way than if it is to win. If it is to resolve, you need to do it in a different way still, okay? What's the difference between those three? Again, understand for yourself. What are your definitions of things? It's important. You think you're going to be able to shift ground when you want. You might not be able to. So your definition of things here, de-escalate, should be that you are attempting to make the conflict go away and you don't really, you're not concerned particularly about fixing any, any underlying problem. To resolve something means you really want to fix the problem and you want to get to the bottom of it and determine who has culpability where. And to win means you don't care if you're wrong, you want to defeat the opponent. Any of those three options is viable under certain circumstances. And it's up to you to determine the circumstances. But if you aren't actively thinking to yourself when you're entering into these conflicts, what is my goal? Then you're doing yourself a disservice and you're, you're engaging in what I would call gut argumentation. You know, you're, you're led around by your reflexes. You're not functioning as a decision-making entity in that capacity. All right, now, next, when you do get into an argument, let's say we're going to talk, start with a win one, okay? How to win the argument. First of all, I understand there are always two, at least two, and usually three layers of argumentation that are going to occur. The contention level argument assumes you both agree on framework. If you and I are arguing over which one's healthier, uh, pizza or hamburger, and I'm saying... Actually, the beef in a pizza is healthier because it has blah, 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 blah. And you're saying, actually, a pizza is healthier because it has less total meat and less total fat. Then we're arguing on the same framework, same kind of impacts, okay? Same units. So, no problem. We're just arguing contention all this stuff. ENTPs won't stay there. They refuse to stay there. <laughs> they can't stay there. We will go up to framework. Make sure you're doing it intentionally and you know what you're doing, right? What I mean by going up to framework is we shouldn't be arguing this point on this vector, on whether or not it's healthy or not. That's not the deciding factor on whether we should get a hamburger or a pizza. And up from there, okay? So understand what kind of argument you're making. If you're making a framework argument, make sure if you're trying to win the argument, you pen them somewhere in framework first before you allow yourself to be taken into the contention level argumentation. Once you allow yourself to be taken onto the contention level argumentation, you are basically conceding to their framework. If you are arguing their contentions with non-framework responses, then you are conceding those contentions are valid under some framework, and obviously it's going to be theirs. So, to put this more in sort of lay terms that people will feel resonant with themselves, let's say you're having an argument with um, a supervisor at work who's trying to tell you X, Y, and Z about either a couple things which are critical of you, indicating that you've done some, you failed to meet some expectation, and one of which is uh, instructive to you. Oh, I need you to have this thing done by whenever. But you don't want to acknowledge the thing he's claiming you did wrong, and you don't want to um, comply with his instructions. Now, there are a number of reasons why these don't want to's might be in place. Maybe you're right. Maybe you just don't want to. Uh, maybe you're just being a dick. Whatever the reason is, if you want, if you're gonna take, follow that path, 
Do it well. When? So what does that mean? It does not mean making statements, number one. Begin the round with questions. Begin the round with questions. Obviously, almost every round is going to start with some little spark. Somebody makes a statement, somebody else makes a statement back. There's some conflict, there's some grr, there's some dance of domination shit going on. Pull back immediately to question mode. And probe. This is your way to set up for the counterpunching. Make him show you his punches before you start throwing any blows. Half the time, if you're just asking questions, and there's like pauses in between them. So, you say that I needed to complete this by this date. I do see the, the deadline here. How much weight are you putting into additional tasks you assigned between date A and date B? Are you considering that in, in your equation here and determining my culpability? I'm just, I'm just, I just want, I'm just trying to figure it out. You know, I'm just trying to, just trying to get a handle on this whole thing because I want to make sure whatever I did wrong, I'm culpable for it. So I need to pin you down on what I did wrong. Now, a smart supervisor is going to back down pretty quick as you start questioning. You start asking more and more questions. And remember, when a supervisor or somebody in an authority position is trying to bust you, what does that mean? It means they kind of have to listen to your questions about what you did wrong. They can't kind of they kind of can't get out of that. They don't have to listen to your pushback. That's why you don't give any. You just ask questions. Okay, so okay, so okay, this is the rule. Gosh, I mean I'm really doing my best here, but I'm not quite sure how what what's the justification for this again? Oh, it doesn't matter what the justification is? So it, it could hurt me. This could be hurting the company or anything? And it would be okay? That would be fine? I, I'm not saying anything, boss. Hey, look, I'm just asking some questions. There's no question. I'm trying to clarify in my own head. You're telling me I did something wrong. I'm trying to make sense of it. I'm, I'm, I know I can be a little slow sometimes, a little dumb sometimes, but um, I'm hoping you can help me figure it out because, look, the last thing I want to do is have any sort of problem here at work. Okay. Always remember that framework is more important than contention level argument. Went on framework. Don't worry about the contention level stuff. At this point, you're conceding all the facts that he's stating or whatever, potentially. If, if there's one that you actually can dispute, dispute it. If, you, if somebody's giving you facts that are not should not be in dispute, that you're going to have a hard time defending, embrace them and add on another one in the same area. That is absolutely true, and this is additionally is true. That'll help you make your point. Now, I've got more questions for you. They don't like that. I want to talk about clean and, and bad habits. Talked about it a little bit already, actually, but the point being that most ENTPs who don't have any formal training have some bad habits. Those bad habits include uh, jumping on on good arguments without looking any further down the path. So you come across a good argument, it sounds good, resonates with your intuition. You're like, hell yeah, I gotta say that. That's snappy. You better pause. You better stop. You better think you may end up double binding yourself. You have to make sure that things you commit to are things that are in coordination with your grand plan. Which again, brings us back to what you're doing here. If you're trying to win, your grand plan should be something along the following. You want to make it about the other guy and what they're doing wrong. You want to, to quickly concede, apologize, and move past and get back to your important questions to show that yeah, absolutely, you're totally right that I did that. But okay, so I, I, and I definitely apologize for that. But now let's talk about these other things here that I keep asking about. I really need to get cleared up. When you do that, you define the narrative. The thing he's complaining about is not important. The thing you're complaining about is important. You're not even complaining about anything. Right? 
That makes it very difficult for a supervisor to deal with you, somebody in a work authority position, right? Because they're the one who initiated the conflict by taking the task for something. You're the one who's trying to clear up exactly what you did wrong, like you should, like a good employee should do. And they're the one who's not answering your questions about how you need to behave differently, about why this is in place, and what you can do to, to for how it makes sense to you. Because if, in fact, your supervisor is trying to tell you something along the lines of, well, you have to do it because it's the rule, even though it hurts the company, well, gosh, I mean, I'm not willing to do that. I don't know. I'm not willing to harm this company so much. And so I was just trying to ask my supervisor, how do I reconcile this? He didn't have any answer for me. And that's why I'm here with you now, Mr. Vice President. If that's how it's got to go down, that's how it's got to go down. All right? Now look, work's a different matter than other things. Work's full of hierarchy. Full of pointless, arbitrary rules and hierarchy. So, if you need to set things straight at work, go ahead and set things straight, okay? If some supervisor's coming at you all uppity and thinking they're superior because they have underlings, and if they think of you as an underling or a subordinate, then it needs to be made clear to everybody that you are subordinate to no one and that anybody who wishes to subordinate you is going to encounter... A lot more trouble than it's worth. And then anybody who wants to subordinate others ought to seriously consider their own spiritual well-being in the first place. <sighs> so there's a context where you might have to put somebody in check. And an example of how to do it, right? With questions, not with statements. There's one other thing that I want you to think about when you're doing that. Number one, concession. Definitely work the concession angle. You have to concede everything you can concede that doesn't mess with your core mechanism. Number two, have a core mechanism. What angle are you working here? Are you working the company is being harmed and you're a good employee who's trying to protect it? Are you working your uh, supervisor is being ethically questionable in his decision making regarding who to scold and for what and for why and his lack of consistency and fairness is a significant threat to this company's well-being? Are you working an angle that says... He has a personal vendetta against me, and we need to can seriously consider whether or not he has psychological problems. <laughs> are you working? What angle are you working? Is something you need to consider before you start executing this plan. Next, this is number something huge, big important rule. I don't know what number rule it is, but it's important. Always turn, always turn, never counter. When they are saying, I state claim X because warrant Y, therefore impact Z. You have to turn it. There are two ways to turn something. So let's say your supervisor is saying to you, look, you're, you were late three days last week. You, um, you come in and you're disheveled looking and you, you look as though you just rolled out of bed. And it, it sends the wrong message to everybody around here that you don't care about things. And that's why we're going to have to give you this punishment. Well, if you're a proper NTP, your response needs to be to turn it on them, right? Well, I'm, it's sending a bad message to everybody around here. Okay, so do I get to take messages from other people? Because if I do, my message is I need to be less successful and less productive. Because I've noticed my, my co-workers are not producing as much as I am, even though I'm late. So, yeah, I'm late a few minutes. It's true. And that sets a bad example for them. So they're going to be late a few minutes from now on. Now, they're way less productive than me. So, are they getting punished for being way less productive than me? Because they're setting a bad example for me. And I might end up uh, being less productive too. Gosh, we're all so impressionable, aren't we? The point being, turn it on them. Oh, if your warrant, if, if your explanation for why this is a problem is true, then this must also be true. Okay, let's have both those truths. Except your truth, you get $5. My truth, I get nuclear winter. Well, my impact's bigger. You lose. So this is what I mean by turn. That's one kind of turn. Is take co-op that mechanism, apply it to something bad. Another kind of turn 
is to say, actually, the mechanism you're talking about causes the exact opposite thing. It doesn't influence them badly. It influences them well. It shows them, hey, if I produce more, I can have more flexibility in my schedule. You get an impact turn. Actually, influencing them badly is a good thing. They're shitty employees. I'd like to influence them badly so they get fired, so this company can be more efficient and we can all make more money. All turns. Don't counter. No, I'm not late. It's a terrible answer. Well, I didn't mean a terrible answer. Terrible, right? You have to just say, okay, well, let's think about what you're saying and apply it. If we use your logic, remember, the thing is, this technique is a is especially designed in this particular example, and in this particular instance, this kind of approach is designed as a reactive approach. You are, this is not a way to start shit, right? This is a way to react when somebody starts shit with you, especially if they're in a position of greater authority than you are. And you need to um, deal with the hierarchy stuff as well as the fact that you want to beat this fucker, right? So in order to do that, what you have to do is all the stuff I just said. Okay, so ENTPs, look, I know you think you guys, each of us, thinks we're the best. <laughs> we're, we're like that episode of SpongeBob where all the, the like, sea monster guys get in the cave down underneath the water and then they're about to go take over Bikini Bottom, but then they start fighting with each other and they never do. But listen to me. I am a debate coach. I've been doing this for a long time. And I've kicked a lot of other ENTP asses, all right? I don't, I don't mean to say this as though, like, ha, ah, I'm king of the ENTPs. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is I, I recognize something. Incredibly talented people who have no formal training get their asses destroyed by incredibly talented people who do have formal training. Think about it.